Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. This is Halloween special number three. It's all about zombies. So are slingshots a good weapon in a zombie apocalypse? Well, uh, maybe in certain situations they are. For example, they are not very good if you have to face like a storming um, a mass of zombies coming towards you because you're just too slow in shooting. What you can do though is you can just climb a rooftop so that the zombies can't get you and clean out zombie after zombie after zombie until the area around you is no longer infested. So you do this just like that. But the danger is, is the slingshot strong enough to reliably crack a zombie skull? Well, let's find out. So this is a carpenter's hammer. And we all know from a million recorded incidents that this can certainly crack a human skull. We'll find a piece of wood that the hammer cannot crack. And if we found that piece of wood, we try if we can destroy it with a slingshot. Okay, we'll test it. <coughs> okay. This is the weak. This is our next candidate. It's a piece of wood made for kitchens. And we'll test, and this is like 40 millimeters thick. So we test if the hammer can penetrate it. It went in, but it didn't crack it. We'll do one more test. No, no penetration. Okay, that's gonna be our test skull now. So we will test it with the 20 millimeter steel ball and the hand howitzer first. A dent, that's all. Okay, next test, 25 millimeter steel ball. A bigger dent, but not good enough. What we need is a stronger slingshot. Now I tell you a bit about how you can make a slingshot stronger. Now the early slingshot styles involved pulling to the corner of your mouth. And then we found out that it got stronger when you pulled out more far. And then the strongest is when you pull out really, really far. So it's the acceleration length that determines the strength of a slingshot. And of course the strength of the rubber bands, but this is pretty much maxed out already. So draw length is the answer. So this is what I came up with. The zombie rooftop slingshot. It consists of a few parts, like this lever and the fork, which can be moved in a long, long way. And what you do is, you simply use the lever to stretch the bands. And then you go all the way, like this. And now you can determine if you want to shoot down or straight or halfway, so you got the whole range. It's not hard, and you've got a, a draw of about three meters and 70. Let's test if this is strong enough to penetrate the board. <laughs> strong enough. So this is what happened. Okay, I know that some of the wise asses out there will say he weakened the boards with the uh, shots from the regular slingshot. So we take a fresh piece and shoot at it. <laughs> it works. Okay, now we know it has enough power, but is it accurate enough? So I bought this little turnip. I hate it, but it's very good for simulating a zombie head. So we put this beautiful mask on it and position it downwards, just like a zombie who approaches a rooftop. Oh, 
Okay, that was right through the nose. Right through the eye. So how can we aim with this? And also how low can we shoot? What's, what is the steepest angle? Well, you know I put this uh, piece of melon or whatever it is right there representing a zombie's head that is already very close and below me because I'm standing on the rooftop. So, what we do is we just point this downwards very much like this and then we shoot like So as you see, it was fairly easy to aim up and down. Now, how do we aim sideboards? Well, let's see how if we can hit that melon that is far to the left from where I'm standing right now. But what I do is I simply kick this until it's in the line of fire, right here. Very simple. And then I pull this upward. Okay. So you see it's quite effective and it's a lot of fun because this is the most powerful hand operated slingshot that I've ever built or seen. Well, that was it for today. Enjoy Halloween. Thanks and bye bye.